Hello everyone, and welcome back to the breathtaking Court Farms Country Park. Now you'll have to forgive me, it's going to take me a couple of episodes to, to get over the wonder of this map and to stop introducing it with uh, complimentary adjectives as it were, but it's just incredible. I mean, look at that, it's the morning haze, the clarity, the detail, it's absolutely gorgeous, it really is. No, I'm not the first person to say that, but I can't help it, what can I say? Um, so... Yeah, welcome back. Episode 2 of the Let's Play series. We've got a bit to do today. Uh, the plan is, at the minute, I need to get the first two fields here cultivated and potentially limed and seeded, or at least ready for seed. But I do hope to, to get some seed into the ground today. Um, the, the two grass fields that we mowed in the last episode are back up and growing again. So um, they do need ploughing. The field does need ploughing, especially in order for me to, uh, for, for the precision farming to recognise it as a field. Um, but I'm not in a rush for that. And because the grass is growing again, I'm going to take advantage of the, the free grass, as it were. So we shall let that be for now. Um, but the plan is today, initially, I'm going to get in our lovely little Massey 390T uh, and get that hooked up to our little cultivator because it can cope with that um, and get the two the two ploughed fields cultivated. So that's going to be the first couple of jobs of the day. Um, now, there's a couple of things I wanted to uh, to, to, to talk about initially. Um, some of you wonderfully well-informed viewers have told me that I was actually using this mower wrong uh, in the first episode. This is actually a mower that's suited and made for a reverse drive tractor or mounted on the front of the tractor. Um, I didn't know that, so I'm gratefully uh, appreciative of the information um unfortunately now I, again this is something i didn't know i've been using this tractor for quite a while now I, I think i first got hold of this tractor when carmsden first came out actually and i was using it on that map um but i didn't know that it had this feature so if i jump in and start it up um now where is it if i need to bring up the hood don't i it's that one change driving direction check that out it's a reverse drive tractor. I didn't know that. <laughs> How cool is that? So, let's pop it back to normal anyway. But what that does mean is I can mount the mower uh, on the back of this tractor and turn it around, as it were, and do it correctly. Uh, so I shall be doing that from now on, come the next uh, next mowing of grass. Um, the one thing I can't seem to get right, though, is the, the steering wheel here. Uh, as you can see, it just folded itself back up in order to allow, as it does in real life, you can fold it up so that you can get out the tractor. But I can't seem to get it to sit right when I'm in the tractor. There's no option. If I if I open the cover, if I, if I open cut the cover there, you can see the, um, the LED roof light that folds up and down. Um, and the folding of the tractor brings out the, the the warning signs there so that's all it does i can't seem to to get that steering wheel to work now i do have the the simple ic the interactive control thing on and as you can see if i if i bring that up that that works fine when i use my mouse so i can get into the tractor but there's no i can't do anything with the steering wheel it doesn't interact at all so i'm not too sure how to do that if, if it's not possible, it's not possible, but if there's, uh, again, if there's any more uh, of you wonderful viewers out there who are way more informed than I am, uh, I'd be grateful uh, if you could let me know. In fact, let's just turn this tractor off now. Demonstration purposes done. So, yeah, so that's that. So, as I say, um, thank you to all of you who pointed out that I was using that mower entirely wrong, um, and I shall be doing it correctly uh, in the future. I'm just very grateful that I do have the tractor... Um, a with the front mounted PTO uh, if it didn't have the reverse drive option but fortunately it does so I can do it properly um, now what else did I want to uh, to talk about obviously we've got no we've got no cows yet and uh, we've only got 13,000 um, pounds cows will be coming at, at some point soon in the future I hope when I've built up a bit more a bit more money um, that's what I wanted to do I needed to check um, how much money it's going to cost to fix the combine harvester so i need to pick this toolbox up let's just squeeze away around here wander over to here because i haven't actually checked how much it's going to cost to get this harvester up and running now obviously i know that we don't have any uh crops fields yet ready to harvest 
open there we go so repair seven thousand five hundred and seventy three pounds that's going to cost to repair okay so i'm not going to do that just yet because that'll take me down to very little money and i need to initially hey up initially i need to uh, i need to be able to afford to buy lime and seeds for the two fields that we are going to work on today uh, and get the cultivating done so uh, and i'll obviously fill the cedar up with seed fill the uh, the lime spreader up with lime and fertilizer um the fertilizer will go in the cedar that that, that does seed and fert and the lime will be done in the the kubota geo spread thing there a bit later on so anyway i think i've covered what i needed to cover oh oh that was it there was a, a couple of you who had requested i pop uh, a list of the mods that i'm using in this uh, game um so what i've done i've spent a few minutes popping quite a reasonably extensive list in the video description most of them are quality of life mods uh that are, that they're described as um there's quite a few of those um so i did spend a few minutes going through them um and just listing what uh, what mods i use and the links to each of those mods uh, and i have also popped links to most of the equipment i've got i couldn't actually figure out which one of these uh fent tractors i'm using obviously i know which one it is but uh as for which mod it was so i haven't been able to identify yet which one that is in because i've got i've got hundreds and hundreds of mods they're not all active in this game um but i've got several fent uh 800 900 vario favorite mods um and i couldn't identify which one this one is so i just it, it can be done of course it can be done i just haven't got around to doing it yet so i'll do that as uh at the next available opportunity um but i have popped links to the likes of this one here 4d modding's uh, high spec uh, manure slurry spreader thing um the the massey um the what else was the the bale trailer um the ford the i couldn't actually find the links to this one as well this one i believe i remember i think i got it from elite farming's discord page um and i did check back there yesterday um just to check that it was still there and i couldn't see any sign of it so th there isn't a link at the minute to that one um but yes if, obviously if there's anything else any of you want to know please just uh, drop me a comment in the the comment section below and i will do my very best to tend to it and uh, tell you what you want to know so anyway no time like the present we have to get started we've got a lot of work ahead of us today um as i say we're going to start the day off by spinning this thing around and picking up the cultivator and then we'll get the two fields cultivated um in fact well, let's just jump out here so i can see what i'm doing a bit better we'll get the two fields cultivated um get some lime onto the ground give the give the soil a good uh, good bit of nutrition there we go no, there's no cables and pto with that thing is that let's just lift it up now which one should we start on first i think we shall we shall start with uh this one here closest to us get this thing unfolded now this is one of the few things that this mass is going to be capable of uh, of dealing with uh, in this series at least there we go excellent yeah it's uh it's not going to be capable of pulling the plow or anything like that or dragging big trailers with bales on or anything like that because it's only i think it's about 90 horsepower um so this will just be the the farm tractor as it were just doing small jobs it can cultivate obviously as we can see it's capable of pulling this thing behind us because i think the the cultivator itself requires i, th I think it's about 31 horsepower um so it's perfect for this little thing so I'm going to crack on with this job first. I'm going to get this uh, this field done and I shall pick you back up when it's done, uh, when I'm on my way to the next one. Uh, and we'll go from there. Well, this is coping very well. It's an ideal machine for this uh, for this job. Nine miles an hour we're running, we're running out of the minute, so it's coping really well and it's leaving a beautiful, let's just have a, a quick pop out it's leaving a beautiful seedbed texture on the ground considering this is a very simple rudimentary uh, somewhat archaic cultivator and um, if I just pop into the map quickly and there you can see it's a uh, seedbed which is lovely so yeah just thought I'd give you a quick update with that 
show you how we're getting on. We've got a bit to do with it, uh, ahead of us, but at nine miles an hour, it's a lovely morning just to trundle around the field in it, so we shall keep at it. I shall see you all in a while. There we go. Job well done, if I don't say so myself. Look at that, it leaves a beautiful seedbed texture behind, doesn't it, considering it's such a, a simple thing. So, first field done. Very proud of that. It's only taken me, I think, about 40 minutes to get this one done, so we're going to crack on with the next one. Um, I'm very impressed with this tractor. Uh, I know it's the smallest one of the bunch, um, with the least amount of power, but it's very capable. It's got a lovely tight turning circle, and... Yeah, it just it just runs really well, very well indeed. So we're going to get over to the the second field we need to work on, which is just over yonder there on the left hand side. So if we just trundle up the hill, I'm off to the left here, and down my little lane that I made, we shall get cracking in this one. And I think this one might... This will, it, it might take about the same amount of time, I'm not too sure. Um, but I, I, think, I think with this one, I am going to pop it onto a bit of course plate, get that working. And see how that copes with it. And again, I shall see you back in a wee while. Right, okay, that's now both fields cultivated, and what a great job Courseplay has done of this one. Uh, it didn't actually miss a single bit of field, which I think, in my several years of playing this wonderful game and using Courseplay, um, I don't think I've ever seen that. So if I just pop into the field menu here, as you can see, and honestly, truthfully, hand on heart, I haven't had to clear up a single patch of this field that Courseplay has missed, so that's uh, great news, well done. So, right, what I have done now, what we're going to do now, as you can see, I have still got uh, £13,014, and I have taken on a field contract, field 22, which is uh, in the menu here. Where are we? Down here. So I've just uh, I've, I've just added uh, added it into the, the auto drive network. Um, it is a bailing and silage contract. So again, if I quickly pop down to the menu here field 22 uh a mowing bailing wrapping silage contract to take to the biogas plant 
um, because obviously I need to get some lime and seed into this field um, ideally today that would be ideal um, and I know I've got 13,000 pounds but I'm not entirely convinced I'm going to have enough to fully lime and seed the fields and fertilizer because I need to buy lime seed and fertilizer so that's going to involve a trip to the shop to buy several big bags of of the three products we need um, and I don't want to fall short so in order to bolster the income and give ourselves a bit of money because this uh, the contract is it's paying nine thousand two hundred and ninety two pounds and as we all know there may well be some residual left over from the contract so I'm going to sell that as well uh, to give myself a bit of extra money so what we're going to have to do now we're going to take this uh, wee beastie back to the farm and park it up for now and we're going to what we're really going to do is we're going to put the auto drive course to, really to the test um, and also what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to use the mower in the correct fashion as well isn't it I'm going to get a chance to, to have a go in my reverse drive tractor that I've just discovered <laughs> so first things first we shall drop this off drop the cultivator off back where it belongs we shall hook the mower up to the fence there we go let's jump out of there disconnect that and turn you off right so we're going to take the fence over to the field with the mower on the back um, now this really is going to put the auto drive course to the test because as we know anyone who's had a go on this map yet will know that the field entrances and gateways are particularly narrow and relatively challenging especially for large tractors and now I'm going to be pretty brave as it were am I in the right spot there will that hook up yes it will excellent right PTO cables jump in fold up and again please there we go. Excellent. Right, so... It's going to be a bit of a logistical nightmare because I'm, I'm what I'm going to do... Um, with this being a reverse drive tractor, it's going to be running the mower here. And I'm going to be facing that way. So what I'm going to do, it's going to need the weight on the front to take the, to, because of the weight of the mower, to take it there. But I'm going to bring the windrower to the field with the Ford, and then I'm going to attach the windrower to the front of the Fent, so that it can operate while reversing. It seems a bit, uh, a bit backwards, quite literally, but that should work, shouldn't it? So I can get two jobs done in one. I can mow and windrow. So I'm not, I'm not going to be spending too much more on fuel. Um, and then while... Oh no, it won't be while I'm doing that, because I'm going to be doing that myself. Uh, but then I'm going to be... I'll, I will bring the baler over to the field with the, with the Ford. Um, and pretty much play a bit of switcheroo. Uh, when the mowing's done, when the mowing and windrowing is done, we will then run the baler with the Fent again. Uh, and get it baled and wrapped. So, that's the plan. There does seem to be a little bit of logic in that. I don't think I've ever seen somebody run a reverse drive tractor with a windrow attached to the front, so uh, I'm sure it must have been done at some point, but I'm just trying to save a bit of money, save a bit of money on fuel. So, anyway, right, first things first, um, where am I going? I want to put the auto drive course to the test, and I want to see how this big beastie fares with the roads, with the traffic, field 22, off you go. Yeah. I do hope, because it should make it round here. Come on. Excellent. Yes. It didn't do it last time in the previous episode with, with the plough, because the plough was a, a very rigid, long piece of equipment hanging off the back. Uh, and it hit the wall, so it stopped it from turning the corner. But I'm going to stick with it for this. Um, and see how it copes with the... As I say, with the traffic, with the road network, with the narrow field entrances, or entrance in this one. I'm hoping it should do all right, he says, naively. <laughs> right, the first thing to navigate is the crossroads. 
and it's just going to be blind luck whether we make it without in encountering any traffic we've just made it in time for that big cement mixer thank you for your patience mate oh he's not following me thankfully or is he? oh he is <laughs> now this road is a two way road with traffic um, so there will be oncoming traffic coming our way so I'm Again, I'm hopeful that I've managed to get the uh, the lanes far enough over to the left so that it won't foul the, f the oncoming traffic as long as we don't hit something coming around the corner here. No. Nope. So far, so good. Don't hit the fence, don't hit the fence. Oof. We didn't hit the fence. Right. But this does give us a very brief opportunity just to, just to glance around at the the landscape as it were on this map as I said before it's gorgeous it's turned into a bit of a grey cloudy day though so that we haven't got any blue skies and sun shining through so uh, but again it's just typical for British daily weather isn't it it's not always sunny it's very rarely sunny so we hang a right here into the field into the the lane that takes us to the field sorry this shouldn't pose any problems I don't think Let's not bash into those bins. There we are. Now I'm going to keep the camera nuts and low here so that we don't uh, get fouled by the trees. But the field we're working in is on the left up here. So I'm really hoping... Because it can be tricky creating an auto-drive course to successfully navigate into a, a very narrow gate. Come on, come on. Oh, yes! It didn't touch a thing. I'm very proud of that, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm honest. Excellent. Right, OK, so that's that job done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump back over into the Ford that is over at the farm. Bum, bum. Here we are. And we're going to do the same thing with this. But now that, now that I've seen the big fence make it into that field with a weight on the front and with that big mower on the back I am almost, almost 100% convinced that this wee Ford and the uh, the wandering windrower uh, with its rear steer wheels will more than successfully make that journey so let me just let's bring up the hood again Fields 22, off you go. Well, this is going to be a bit of fun, isn't it? So, I shall see you back at the field. Right, the Ford's just arriving in field 22, somewhere behind that hedge. Come on, do me proud. Oh, would you believe it? <laughs> it was going so well. Although it does look like it's going to work its way round. Come on, fight your way through. Maybe not, you might need a bit of intervention from me, mightn't you? Let's bring the menu up. Come on. There you go. Oh, it's that bit. No, making a hash of this. Right, I'll sort it out. Right, okay. Let's have a look at my vastly unconventional setup. Or is this unconventional? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'd love to hear from anyone who has even tried this before, especially in real life. If a reverse drive mower is meant to do what it's to do, is it acceptable and normal and even done practice to stick a windrow on the front of your tractor when you're doing it? I mean, it's fine for the in, within the confines of the game, I guess, because it's not real, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. As I said, to save myself the fuel, um, I have uh, I've dropped the weight off just outside the gate so it doesn't get in the way, and I've sent the Ford back over to Home Farm so it can be ready to bring the baler to us when we need it. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to bring that right away because I don't want that to get in the way. Um, and this is the field we have to mow. So, 
I'm going to crack on with this. Let's jump in here. Now, I need to bring up the HUD so I can see which uh, tools I'm working with. So, I've got the windrow selected there. Uh, no. Windrow. Oh, is this... <laughs> it's reverse. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's on the front of the tractor. Right. So, let's activate you. And let's activate you. Right. Will this work? Yes, it will. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Okay. So, I shall pick you all back up in a wee while when I have completed this field. Look at this. Never done this before. <laughs> Right. Well, that was all manner of weird and wonderful all at the same time, but do you know what? It works. <laughs> now, yes, the, the field looks a bit patchy, in here, uh, but I've, I've got every single bit of the grass. It's all done. I know the rows aren't perfectly neat, and there's a few uh, few areas of, uh, of sin in the corner over here, I suppose, where everything's a bit of a mess, but it worked. The field is mowed, and it is windrowed in one trip. So... Right, excellent. So, what I'm going to do now, I am going to... Because I still need the Fent for the baler. Because the, the, the Ford might be able to bring the baler over to the field for me. But it's, it's I think it is just too big. Uh, and I'm going to need to start uh, mucking around just getting rid of some of these bits of equipment. Because I've just not got the space. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to get all that sorted out. And the next time you see me, in for you guys, it will be a matter of seconds. I shall be in this field back in the fent facing the correct way with the baler so i'll see you in a minute right all logistical bits done we're back in the field the fence back here it's got the weight back on the front and it's got the baler attached as you can see and the ford uh, is back over here with the bale trailer and the mower and windrow have clearly been taken back to the farm so I'm going to crack on with this, I'm going to jump in the fence and get the baling done, get all the bales picked up and fire them over to the BGA in however many trips it requires and hopefully from that we will have completed the contract, we'll make a good uh, a good few hundred pounds or a few thousand pounds sorry from that and we should get some uh, bit of an extra bonus on top of that from a few extra silage bales that we will no doubt get so uh, yep as before I shall pick you all back up very soon when this job has been cleared. Right, there we go. I've cleaned my mess up. <laughs> now we have got out of this field, I think. Sorry, I should have checked that before, shouldn't I? We had 62, so 12. We've got 12 bales uh, out of this field for the contract. So, and that will, I, I'm pretty sure I can get all of those onto this trailer. So, job well done. Right, so I'm going to send the Fent and the Baler back home to the farm and we're going to get these, uh, get them all picked up with the Ford and sent over to the BGA. So I shall, uh, again, I'm going to uh, just get this job done and I'll pick the camera back up in a second when we're running around the field with the Ford. Right, back again. Just doing the last, uh, last run around, getting these bales picked up. Now I am taking advantage of the, of the auto load here. Um, one reason just to save a bit of time because the weather forecast uh, has given rain in the next few hours. So I'm going to. Uh, I want to get the. I want to get my field sorted. I want to get the lime done um, and the seeds down in the ground drilled. So two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Feel like I'm missing one somewhere. Oh, right in the middle. <laughs> Let's go grab that one. And then that's this contract. Pretty much well done. But yes, as I said before, out of interest, I am very interested just to hear from any of you who clearly know much more than I do. The way I did this grass with the mower and the and the, um, the windrower backwards, you know, attached to the front, you know how I did it. Um, is that even done? Is that something that's even done in the real world? Um, I'm very interested to know. It did. Uh, it felt a bit odd. It was a bit of fun. I'll, I'll tell you that. And 
it works, so I'm certainly going to be um, I'm going to be doing that again, if I'm honest. Let me just make sure I've got this the right way around. Yeah, right. So BGA, bang, done, off you go. Let's and traffic. <laughs> There's always that problem to run into, isn't there? Let's just get this out of the way. Clear the traffic. There's nothing coming that way. The Ford behind me now. Now the roads are clear, so... You should be all right now. Home farm. Off you go. Yeah, excellent. This, this one is a wee bitty slower than the, than the Fent, but this is going to put the two-way to the test. There we go. Oh, you see the other, the opposing traffic still does slow down if it gets a, if it feels like it's a tiny bit close to the oncoming vehicle. Again, let's just jump in here. That's going to. Oh no! Did it? Oh, I don't know. It's working. They're not crashing. That's the main thing. Yeah, that one did it. Then it just kind of comes to us, comes to a sudden halt, doesn't it? As if it thinks it's going to get crashed into. Let's hope we don't encounter anything around this bend. Not a problem though. Well, I'm quite proud of my auto drive course with this with this map. It's working a treat. So anyway, it's going to take a few minutes to get ourselves to the BGA. According to auto drive, there we've got. Uh, 2 minutes and 46 seconds so I'll pick you back up when we get there and we'll see how much money we bring in right here we are moment of truth we just landed at the BGA so I'm pretty sure I just need to unload drop them that way let's bring up the hood again so we can see what we gain and then unload bales here well, that'll do. Look at that. £4,052 on top of the contract. The contract's 100% finished, as you can see from the contract hood at the top there. Uh, yeah, just over four grand extra. So we're now at 17, and now I can turn in the contract. So, dum dum dum, collect. Boom. £26,359. That's brilliant. I'm really, really chuffed with that. Let's reset that trailer. Um, so while I'm at this end of the map, I am going to sensibly cross the road. There we go. Watch out for all these trees. And I'm going to pick up a few big bags of seed, fertiliser and lime. There we go. Right, stocked up. I've just spent £6,470 on eight bags of lime, eight big bags of, of lime, uh, two 5,000 litre pallets of solid fertiliser and two bags of seed. I'm, I'm quite aware I may need a bit more seed, but um, the trailer's full. Um, and these pallets are 4.2 tonnes each. <laughs> uh, the, the, these are part of a, a mod. Uh, I can't exactly remember which mod it is at the minute, but it's uh, clearly something to do with uh, pallets and seed and all sorts of bits and bobs like that. Um, but yeah, 5,000 litres for £1,000. So that's a good money-saving uh, mod. Uh, so I took advantage of that. I can't. I, they don't do seeds and lime in these pallets, obviously, so uh, it's just the fertiliser I've been able to get hold of. Um, but I've got a funny feeling this tractor is going to wheeze itself home with the weight on this trailer. So let's jump in. First of all, goodness, yeah, you can uh, you can feel the tractor struggling with this weight. Let's just hope nothing's coming. Excellent. Right. Let's get this sent home. And this isn't going to do it any good, is it? Coming to a stop on a hill. Come on. <laughs> right, we'll get this journey over and I shall see you back at the farm. Right, we're back at the farm. Everything's unloaded. I have popped the lime and the seed in here because I'm I think I'm correct in saying that you in real life anyway you shouldn't store seed and fertilizer near each other, but are you alright with lime? 
those that know more than I do can let me know in the comments. Um, so yeah, we're just loading the uh, loading the spreader up with lime now. We're going to get out into the two fields, uh, and I have popped the two pallets of fertilizer in the shed here for now until we can uh, get loaded up. So yeah, we're going to jump into the fields and get the lime spread. So that should be about done now, I think. Oh no, only halfway done. go excellent so close cover that one there we shall we'll attack this field first the one closest to us now this uh, this spreader does have a 42 meter working width so um, for example this little bit here uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna cover immediately there we go let's see how the uh, See how it's speed it's dropping down at 91, 90, 89. Optimal value for loam. Right, anyway. I'm going to crack on with this, get these fields coated. And I'll see you all very shortly. There we go. All, well, both, sorry, both fields lined gone down really quite well we've got a couple of bags i think three maybe yeah three bags i think left i need to go and check uh, in the shed and there's a, a little bit of a percentage left in here let's bring it back up again 29 percent left in the hopper here so all in all not too bad at all obviously we've got a little bit left but that's handy uh, i've not done anything with these two grass fields i know they they're going to need a, a coat of lime at some point but i'm not doing that right now because i want to concentrate on getting the seed down in these two fields so oh, wall whoops so let's um unload this uh, this fertilizer spreader lime spreader back where it belongs for now in here Let's lower it down. There we go. And get the cedar connected. That looks about right. Excellent. And up you come. And open the cover. Nope. Which one's which? Open cover. It's that one on this one. No, it's not. It doesn't have a, a thing. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, bridge marker. Okay. Oh, maybe it just, it just does it automatically, it would seem. Yeah, okay. Right, so let's... Uh, Top it up with fertilizer. There we go. And now some seed. Now we are within the window of opportunity here. It's, we've I think we've got four of the main cereal crops that we can put down. So if I pop into the menu. Where are we? This one here. So we got wheat barley canola and oat that we can get into the ground i think we can yeah and the usual we've got grass and uh, all seed radish etc etc linseed and rye and uh alfalfa as well uh but what i'm going to go for here is oats um primarily because of their value come harvest time uh, as you can see their top dollar in january is 1166 pounds for oat for barley it's 504 473 for wheat and 1102 for canola so purely for financial reasons initially i'm going to get some oak put down um yeah so that come harvest we can get as much money back in as possible um we'll still get straw from oak so we can benefit from that uh but let's have a look now so oats excellent right okay um Let's get drilling. Turn on. And off we go.
Right. As you can see, one field drilled. Really quite happy with that. It's gone down really, really well. And we managed to do it in one... I haven't had to refill the, the, the cedar, essentially. We've managed to do it in one hopper of both fertilizer and seed. So if we bring up the HUD there, uh, as you can see, we've got 16% left and 33%... 16% uh, seed and 33% fertilizer. Um, and I actually don't think we started with a full hopper of seed either. I seem to recall uh, quickly glancing at it before I uh, started on the montage thing. Uh, that I think we're about 82 or 83% full. So, um, yeah. Um, but what I did do, uh, I did get a bit apprehensive at first. So I did, um, during that montage, I sent the Ford back to the shop. And I picked up another four big bags of seed uh, just in case. So, um we're probably going to have a bit left over, but we're always going to need that. So, as you can see, um, as we all know, when you've drilled a field, it needs rolling. So that's got to be done. Uh, and I don't actually have a roller, so I need to uh, figure that one out and get something that's relatively cheap and cheerful. Um, but it does also say that weeds are growing. Um, and it needs a weeder to remove them. Now, again, forgive me whether I'm mistaken in this. I always thought that you, for this stage of stuff... Was it, is it a hoe that you need to get rid of some weeds and then a weeder? You use a weeder for when the, the, the weeds are slightly bigger and actually visible. Um, because if I pop into the field uh, menu here and I remove the rolling colour, there's not actually any green in the field to state that weeds are growing. So I'm a bit confused by that. But um, either way, at the minute, regardless, it says the expected yield is 122% with a potential of 125 both nitrogen and pH levels are absolutely perfect so that is all good in the hood if you ask me I'm all happy with that so I'm going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna get this over to the farm now uh, spend a few minutes topping up the hopper and we're gonna get it back in the, the next field over if I just get rid of the trees there the field there that we lined it before um, but I'm once I've done that I am going to call it here for this episode uh, I'm gonna crack on with the with the, the the drilling as it were um off camera so let's pop up with seed while we're here there we go we'll actually fill this one up this time okay doesn't seem to want to go much further than that right and we shall reverse it over the top up with fertilizer there we go excellent curious why it fills up to actually 100% with fertilizer but only 99 with the seed but hey ho should be okay Right, so as I say, I'm going to uh, I'm going to set this going in the other field that needs drilling with oats. We're going to, as I said before, I'm going to do it with oats um, purely for financial reasons because it is the more valuable of the crops that we can get in the ground at the minute. Um, yeah, so, but before I do that, I'm just going to switch off and jump out uh, and say to everyone, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, another word of thanks uh, that I want to say to everyone, to all of you, uh, since my first episode, especially of this series, everyone who supported me and commented and liked and subscribed to my channel from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, because yesterday um, I uh, stepped over the threshold of 1,000 subscribers. Um, so I am extremely grateful for everyone's support your comments your likes your, subscri your subscriptions um really i am it's incredible i'm massively humbled um i've had such uh lovely messages um sent to me uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks um and especially since i since i released uh, episode one of uh, of court farms uh, so many of you have come forward and said hello and uh, and given me some uh lovely words of encouragement so again Thank you so much to everyone. Um, so again, if uh, if you're new to the channel uh, and you've just found this video, uh, if you can, hit give it a like. Uh, leave me a comment if you've got any ideas and thoughts um, and hit the subscribe button. Um, all these things go a massive way to helping my channel. So, um, so I'm going to crack on here and get this field drilled. Um, and I shall see you all in episode three. <laughs>